Have you ever wondered if a home that you're looking at is older than it appears to be? Well, today we're exploring the Trapper's Cottage. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Walking into the property, we can already tell that this is something a little different than what's going on on the rest of the street. The buildings don't line up with this house as it sits a little cockeyed, and it also sits a lot deeper. So this is just kind of the first mystery that we're going to find with this house before we even get inside. Now approaching the house, there's a set of stairs that takes us up to the second floor, and that is actually the main floor of the house. So we are going to take these stairs and head on up. Walking inside this house, one of the very first things we notice is the millwork. So we can see it is all done in the federal style with triangular pediments above the doors, windows, and openings. Now, all of this was recreated after a fire that had happened a few decades ago. It was all recreated in a style that would have fit with the original historic features of this house. Now, there is a fireplace here, and of course, this isn't necessarily historically accurate, but it does lead us to a mystery that's down in the basement, which we'll get to soon. In the meantime, let's just go ahead and take a quick glance around here, and then we'll continue on. Now, continuing further into this house, we come down a half flight of stairs, and this is going to take us to a more modern section of the home. And I think that this was really respectfully done because it's not trying to falsify the historic architecture. There's a clear separation between the old and the new. So we'll just take a quick glance around this, and then we're going to continue down to the basement where things get really, really interesting. Making our way down to the lower level of the house, the mysteries of the construction continue. So Les, you found something really interesting when you were renovating this house, and this wasn't necessarily like this. Can you tell our audience kind of what the story of this fireplace is? When I moved in, the fireplace was drywall here, drywall here. This was just a void area. When I started the remodel down here, you know, jab to jab knife in there, found void. I'm like, all right, here we go. Started pulling that drywall off and found plaster, completely covering it. Started chipping away the plaster. You can see the little pieces of plaster left. Um, I got most of it off, but I kind of like a little bit of it left. What I found was the brick was basically crumbling and they had put a piece of plywood up, a bunch of junk brick and mortar in between that and another piece of plywood just to keep it from falling down. So of course, going into rehab in this fireplace, that was one of the things that we had to fix. Another cool thing, these nails actually came out from the plywood and the bricks that were holding up the arch at the point. So when we rebuilt it, we put in the angle iron. There's two L-shaped angle irons in there. Andrew is his name. He's with Old Time Brick and Stone. He's the one that rebuilt the fireplace, basically. Day one was just the teardown. And he said he had never seen so much soot and junk in a fireplace, in all the fireplaces he's ever redone. I'm guessing at some point, I mean, these nails are pretty old, so I think it had been blocked off for a long time, and maybe they just used it as a, a soot dump from the fireplace upstairs into it. So it took us all day, and I'm, st that, I'm still finding that, that old 200-year-old soot in this house, you know? We got it cleaned out, got it torn down to get back to the structure. Obviously, the entire arch was taken out, and you can even see the outline of the, the bricks that don't have the plaster on it. Um, that's what we eventually had to replace just to make sure that we had a sound brick structure. Once we got done with that, he gave me a crash course in tuck pointing and I wound up doing all the tuck pointing myself. The mantle came from uh, Luke Reynolds who owns Molly's, which is right behind the house here. Um, he has a very nice wood shop on the north side and he helped me cut it down and sand it down and then I finished it from there. Continuing further through this level, we now pass by the bathroom that once contained the fireplace that was freed. And of course, there are two larger windows over here that look out onto the side of the house. 
And these also have those triangular pediments that have been replaced. Now, as we come to the very front of the house, there's something really curious. And Jay, can you tell us about the stone wall you're standing in front of? I'm Jay Gibbs. Um, I don't really have a title. I'm just sort of one of the neighborhood historians. Um, been in Soulard for, uh, at this point, about 39 years. Previous tenants who had been kicked out started vandalizing the building and they exposed the structure. Before they exposed the structure, the building just looked like a tar paper shack. It didn't look like it was worth even saving. It was frankly really ugly and it was an anachronism in this brick neighborhood. And they tore off some of the layers of tar paper and the wood siding and they exposed the original thatch work underneath, briquette entre poteau or thatch work. Anyway, um, if you look at some of the photos, you can clearly see that. My friend Judy called me on the phone one Saturday. She said, Jay, did you see that house on Allen? I said, what house? On? And she told me, and I said, no. And I went and looked, she, and, and she said, this is so exciting. We had no idea this was here. And I had just found an article in the Old House Journal magazine that showed a building in the French Quarter with the same style of construction, the posts with brick in between. And she and I were really excited. And that's when I started taking a lot of pictures. And then the building shortly after it was vandalized was torched and it was heavily damaged by fire, but uh, it was still saved because by then everybody knew what it was. And we uh, were like, wow, this isn't, you know, this isn't just a throwaway. This is really, really old. Construction style dates it to one of the early or probably the earliest oldest house in Soulard. And that's saying something because we have some old houses here. The article in the, in, the, in the Old House Journal dated this style of construction between 1790 and 1840 down in New Orleans. And remember, this this would have been, this house predates the street grid that now exists around it. And it was part of a long linear piece of farmland. And the, the official date on the plaque says 1810. That is a wild guess, we don't know. We'll never know for sure, but it's some, somewhere around there between 1790 and 1840. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. Also, make sure to check out our merch shop to get yourself a This House logo branded t-shirt, perfect for this summer. I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to our members whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. Until then, I'll see you next time on This House.